Thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. So let's have a learning. Shall be based in English immediately. Okay, we're about to start the Mishnah on Kufiyud Beis and Beis, the new parak. Don't be uh, afraid of this Mishnah. It's long, but um, <laughs> it has some simple, uh, simple points. What's the what's going to be the point over here that a woman could be divorced bal karcha, which means that she doesn't need to be fully competent to be divorced. Another point is, is that Chereshes uh, cannot do um, Chalitza because she can't speak. She's a, a deaf mute, so she can't do Chalitza. It's the only way to get out of that marriage would be to do Yibam and then, um, and then to give a get. Another point that we'll see in this Mishnah is that someone that's a cheresh that's married to a chereshes, that marriage is only a rabbinic uh, marriage. The rabbis instituted that that marriage because they don't have the full, they're not fully competent. So the rabbis instituted that marriage. Now, if there is a mitzvah of yibam, for example, this, the, the wife's sister just became a widow to, because the husband's brother just passed away. So then the mitzvah of Yibam comes out is stronger than the marriage to his wife. Yeah, wow. Which is going to have an effect on the... Because uh, that's the Daraisa. That's the stronger one. Okay. So that's, that's the basic mishnah. We'll go through it. Uh, just gives you a bunch of cases and this and that. But there's just a few points here. Chiresh and Nasa Pekachas. A cheresh, a deaf mute, that marries a competent woman. It's an incompetent man that marries a deaf mute woman. If he wants to divorce, so he can divorce. Which the explanation for this is like this. If she's a cheresh, so he doesn't need her competence to divorce her because he can divorce against her will. But how does the cheresh divorce? The answer is that we're going to see in a second. Wait one second. But Masala Kaimi Kaim, and if he wants to keep the marriage, he can keep the marriage. Okay, that seemed to be obvious. But Kshem Shuhu Kainas Beramiza Kachamaitsi Beramiza. The same way that he was able to marry her, that's how he's able to divorce her. Easy come, easy go. If the marriage was a rabbinic marriage that instituted the marriage that a Kherish could get married, so that's the way that you can divorce, that he can divorce her as well. This would become complicated. If it was started, if the marriage was a biblical law marriage, because they started off competent, and then something to happen to him throughout the marriage, then he would be have a difficult time getting out of that, giving her a get, because the marriage is stronger than the institution of the get for him, because he's not competent now. He okay. lost it. He lost this. Okay, we'll see. So he would have trouble getting out. Yeah. So take a look at this. Let's say they started off both competent and then she went, became a deaf mute. If he wants, he could divorce her because we don't need her intention. If he wants, he can stay married to her. Let's say she went crazy. He's able to divorce her. However, the, the, the sages said, told us he should not divorce her. Explanation for this we'll see in the Gemara is that she doesn't have the, she went crazy. She, she may not guard herself from znus. As people could, men could um, misbehave with her. And so it's better that she's under her husband's care than uh, just to be out there wild. Let's say he's the one that went crazy or he became a deaf mute. There's, the Gemara is going to emphasize the difference between the last case where we said la yaitzi and ena metzia elamis. He's never able to divorce. This is already the biblical law that because he doesn't have the intention, he can't give a divorce without him being fully competent. It kind of groups a deaf mute and says imbecile. Imbecile. Yeah. Imbecile, right. Okay. Amr Rabbi Yechen ben Nuri. Rabbi Yechen ben Nuri says, Me me'isha shenashar shi yaitzia. Why? A woman that became a deaf mute, why is he allowed to 
um, divorcer. Basic question that we have. But the husband that became a deaf mute is not able to divorce. The answer is, You can't compare the laws of a man that gives the divorce to the woman that's giving the divorce. And what is that? It's going to say what the, what the difference is. Because the woman can get divorced if it's her will. And if it's not her will, she can be divorced. Even if she wants to stay married, he can um, send her out of the house. It gives her the divorce. But a man can only divorce if it's his will. Now, that means that he needs to be fully competent. Now, today, a woman needs to accede to, to uh, uh, agree to the divorce. And that's a, uh, one of the cherem of Rabbeinu Gershon, that you can't divorce a woman against her will. You know, according to the Torah, you can. So... Yeah, Rabbi Gershon did those two things. You can't marry another woman, a second wife, and you also can't divorce her against her will. Yeah. And, there's, and both of them be, make things very difficult. I mean, the two, the, 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 the two together... But a woman can't uh, leave without her husband. So yeah. 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 Okay. Now, hey, Rabbi Yechon ben Gudgoida, ala haresha, she see a vish yet to beget. Rabbi Yechon ben Gudgoida adds in an interesting point. So let's say there was a haresha, a young girl that was also a deaf mute. Now, she can't biblically you can't get married, except that her father can marry her off, which that's a very strong marriage. Her father marrying her off as a minor is a full marriage. But then when she becomes of age, she can still get divorced. Now, how does she get divorced? The marriage is stronger than the ability to divorce her because she's, a, she's not uh, competent. She's a deaf mute. Oh, well, we know the answer already. The answer is, is that we don't need her competence to divorce her. That's the answer. And Amrulai, they said to him, it's exactly the same thing. If she was Pikachas Vinis Harsha, she started off competent and then she became a deaf mute afterwards. The marriage is stronger than, than the divorce, but it doesn't matter. We don't need that, the, that she be competent by the divorce. We only need the man be competent for the divorce. You follow the, the logic here? It's a continuation of the same theory that the woman does not need to have intention for the divorce. They can, divorce can just be given to her. You'll see a very interesting example later. If he's a What's the example? The Gemara is going to give us like wild example where the person tells his wife, tells the witnesses, watch, I'm about to divorce her. Then he goes over to her and he says, here's a shtar chayv. Here's a, um, he tells the witnesses, here's a get. He tells her, here's a document uh, that says that someone owes, owes you money. He hands it to her. This is the way they serve papers when they don't want to tell the person that they, you know, they, they fake something. A Federal Express here, you know. <laughs> and then the person gets the uh, uh, papers. So th that would work for a woman getting divorced, according to this, according to this um, answer that they give to Rabbi Echen Nuri. We don't need her intention. We just need that the get is good and the witnesses know. And that. So if the guy's a cheresh, just to... Yeah, if the guy's a cheresh, then that's problematic for him to divorce. But she can leave. Whereas right. before, it was more difficult for her. For his wife. Right? Because he's not competent. To right. Get. Right. Now, if the marriage, cheresh with a chereshes, if the marriage was that way, then he can oh, divorce okay. her as well. It. It's only if the marriage was strong because they were he was competent at the marriage. Right. I see. Then, then that becomes complicated. Okay. Okay. Two brothers married to two sisters. All four over here are deaf mute. Or only the husbands are the deaf mutes and the women are competent. Or the two sisters. One of them is a deaf mute and one is competent. 
Or the, the sisters are the deaf mutes. And the brothers are competent. Or the brothers are a deaf mute. Now, that case we had already. Uh, it's giving us like a repeat of that. Or maybe only one of the brothers is a deaf mute, the other one is Pekech. All of these is Harela Peturin, Menachalitza, Menayibam. Why? Because the sister that's now a widow is also the wife's sister. The brother's wife is also the wife's sister. And Yibam is only on the brother's wife, not on the wife's sister. In my let's say they're not sisters, then it's just the brother's wife, right? So the rule is Yechnusu. You can only do Yibam. Why? Because a Chereshes cannot say the statements. There's certain statements in the Chereshes as well. There's certain statements that need to be made by the Chalitza. And if they're not able to do that, then the Chalitza is not valid. If they don't do it, remember we said if they don't do it, then the Chalitza is valid. But the, the, at least they need to be able to do it. And because they're deaf mute, deaf and mute, so then you don't do, can't do Chalitza. So you, what do you have to do? You have to do Yibam. But if he doesn't want to stay married, so then he just divorces them after the Yibam. Shnei two brothers, Echad Cheresh Vechad Pikeach. One is a Cheresh and one is a Pikeach. Pikeach is competent. Nesun Lestei Achoyes, married to two sisters. Pikeches. Both are competent. We had this quoted yesterday and the day before this, these cases. Meis Cheresh Bala Pikachas. The Cheresh, there was only one Cheresh here in the whole case, he passed away. So what should the Pikeach do? He has, he has a little bit of a problem. He has to do Yibam on his brother's wife. But the problem is that's his wife's sister. So the answer is, there's no problem. There's no Yibam here. It's his wife's sister. He has a full marriage to his wife. He's a pikeach, she's a pikachas. That's a real marriage. And his wife's sister is his wife's sister, biologically. So he can't do yibma. His brother's marriage was a weak marriage. His marriage is the real one. Meis pikeach bal pikachas. Let's say it's the opposite. Let's say the pikeach passed away. And now that leaves the cheresh's, the cheresh is left to do yibam. What should the Cheresh do? Well, this is a problem because his brother's marriage was stronger than his marriage. So he's not allowed to stay married now to his wife because the Zika that he has to his brother's wife is a strong Zika. That's a biblical law. But he also can't do Yibam because that's his wife's rabbinically, his wife's Sister. So he divorces his wife and he can't do Yibam either. It sounds like a, so he's in a fix. What's the point of the divorce? Well, he can't stay married to his wife because that's the sister of the. Because oh, she has Zika. It's Achais Zikukasai. And he can't do Yibam either because that's his wife. The, you know, is that rabbinic law I messed? That allowance of him to make to get married sort of messes him up in these like sticky situations. Okay, now the two men here are competent. But the problem is the wives. One of the wives is not competent. The competent, well, not we can't say that. They're both competent. The husband of the Chereshes passed away. What should the, the Yibam, how should that work for the other husband of the Pikachas wife? Well, he's fully married to his wife, this fellow, the, the remaining brother, which means that his wife's sister, the biological sister, is a problem. And his brother's marriage was only rabbinic. So anyway, the Yibam would, would is, a less, is a lesser strength than his marriage to his wife, which makes her forbidden, the Yivama forbidden. So the rule over here would be, um, there's no Yibam, obviously. 
Yeah, usually the weak one's stronger than God. Yeah, but in this case, his marriage is stronger than his brother's marriage. Let's say he's the one that passed away. That was a strong marriage. Now his wife is left as a widow with the strong mitzvah of Yibam. So what did the pikeach do, who's the husband of the chereshes, which is only a rabbinic marriage? Well, he's allowed, he's allowed to divorce his wife because she doesn't need um, competence. He's a pikeach, divorces her. Yeah, or either way, easy come, easy go, right? It's a rabbinic marriage, even if she switched. The only thing is, he can't do... He can't do Yibam because he was rabbinically married to, to, to the Yavama sister, who we just now divorced, but too late. Um, now we can't do Yibam on his brother's wife. But the good thing is he can do Chalitza on her. Because she is a Pikachas. The whole problem with Chalitza was only if she's a Chereshes. She's not a chereshes. She's a pikachas, so she can he can do chalitza and they can both talk. They can both say the statement. Shnei yach and echad cheres vechad pikach nesurim l'stei achayis. Do you have something to say about chalitza, sir? Yeah, he says loy ava. No, loy ava yab. Loy chafasti lakachta. Yeah. Shnei yach and two brothers echad cheres vechad pikach. One of them is uh, deaf mute and one of them is competent. Nesurim l'stei achayis. Achas chereshes vachas pikachas. One of them is deaf mute and one is competent. Well, what a shidduch. <laughs> they don't like this. You know, so how are you matching me up just because I'm uh, uh, deaf mute? Are you matching me up with some other deaf, deaf mute? So you don't see my personality. <laughs> <laughs> Color coding here. <laughs> Looking at the, uh, the license, there's, they have like different codes on the license. Glasses. No good. Okay, so... Um, uh, if the Cheresh passed away, okay. What should the other husband do, the competent one, regarding the mitzvah of Yibam? Well, that's an easy one. He has a strong marriage. Uh, his brother did, had a rabbinic marriage, so his wife's sister. Is not is is a stronger rule than his brother's uh, Yiba. Ma uh, his than his brother's wife's Yivama to do Yibam. Meis pikech bal pikachas the other way. Let's say he he passed away, the one that had the strong marriage. The uh, he was competent. His wife was competent. So what should the other fellow do? His marriage is only rabbinic. It's not really his wife which means that this woman is not really the Yavama sister. But no, it is really the Yavama sister. It's not really, he's not really married to the Yavama sister, biblically. Okay. Might see a sister beget, like we said before, he's going to have to divorce his wife because the Zika is stronger than his marriage. But he's not able to marry the Yavama. I think Sherk Sasanina is biblical. So, yeah. So, how do you take him out of marriage? There's, but there's also a biblical obligation. Only while he's married. His wife and. Only while he's married. Once the marriage ends, he doesn't have those obligations. Including to his children. He has no continuing obligations. Well, the obligations to his children would exist, whatever they are. I mean, he has an obligation to teach his son Torah. That, I think, after a certain age, I think, is only a mitzvah of tzedakah. You, you hear what I'm asking? Yeah, how can they... Yeah. Yeah, but that's because the divorce. The obligation that he has to his children, he still has whatever they are, an obligation to his wife and when uh, he's divorced. They yeah, were holding um, Kuf Yud Bez, Ahmed Bez. I don't know how to tell you what line we're up to. It's a big mission. 
where um, you have a regular Gemara, we're about 15 lines from the bottom. Okay. Saying over here that he can't do, this fellow can't do Chalitza because uh, he can't do Chalitza or Yibam. So therefore, the brother's wife, he can't do Chalitza because he's a deaf mute. He can't do Yibam because his brother's wife is, is also his wife's sister. Um, rabbinically, his, his, uh, his wife. Um, so it leaves this woman with, without ever being free to get to, to be remarried. So we're up to Shnei Achen, two brothers. Echad Cheres, Fechad Pikech. One is a deaf mute and one is competent. Married to two women that are not related. These brothers, they're not, uh, this is, seems like a not complicated case. There was only one Cheres here in the whole thing. He passed away. The husband of one of the, these women that is not related to the other one. So what should the other one do? What's the shaila? It's a regular case of chalitza. His wife isn't related to his wife, to his brother's wife. There's no problem. His brother pa- The only chiddush is, is that there was a rabbinic marriage because he was a cherish. And, he, and he, now he passed away. But nevertheless, the mitzvah of Yibam applies in that case as well. Let's say it worked the other way, that the competent husband passed away. So what should the cherish do? Now he has to do yibam or chalitza. Well, he can't do chalitza, so he only has one option of kainas veina He can only do yibam, and he can never divorce her. Why can't he divorce her? Easy come, easy go. That's what we always said. If he can make a marriage, he can make a divorce. The answer is, is that the marriage here is stronger than a marriage that he would have been able to make. Because this marriage is coming from the mitzvah of Yibam. The mitzvah of Yibam is a biblical law. It's his brother's marriage. It's, a, it's based on his brother's marriage, which that was a strong marriage. And now he's a cherish and he's marrying her. If he would have married her original, initially, he would have been able to divorce her. Whoever instituted that marriage can, will institute the divorce. But here the Torah institutes that marriage. And, the, and the rabbis can't institute a divorce that, to, to that strength. Okay. Never divorce Two brothers. Both competent. Married to two women. One is competent, one is a chereshes. Meis pikech bal chereshes. The pikech passed away. The, the, both pikech, pikech, the, the husband of the chereshes passed away. Ma yase pikech bal pikachas. What should the other brother do? Well, kainas. He can do yibam, but he can't do chalitza because the, the, she is a chereshes. He would have to, if he wants to get rid the, to divorce her, then he would have to divorce a yaiti. It means with a get. Let's say uh, he passed away. This was both competent. So what should the husband of the of the um, uh, of the chereshes do? Well, the wives were not related, so there's no shailah. Easy. Okay. We had this case before, just they were sisters before. Now I have a Cheresh married to a Cheresh's. And his brother is a Pikach married to Pikachas. But the wives are not related. What should the brother do to his for his brother's wife's widow, that's a chereshes, kainas, only yibam. And if he wants to divorce her, then he divorces her with a get. But you can't do chalitza with a cheresh. Right. Or chereshes with a divorce. May speak bal pikachas. But let's say the other husband passed away. Mayasa cheresh bal chereshes. 
what could he what could the uh, what could the uh, brother that's the cheres do kindness he can only do a yivam but he can't do a chalitza and he also can't do a get like we said before because the marriage that he has is stronger than something that he can handle uh, to divorce because this comes coming from a biblical law and he could only make a marriage um, rabbinically and divorce rabbinic according to rabbinic law but this marriage is coming from his brother as a zika for yibam that's too strong for him to to stop okay that's the mishnah i'm a rami barchama it's good i'm happy they gave it to all and all to us in one go sometimes they divide it up into every uh, um yeah, this perek this perek they just gave us one big mishnah they didn't divide it up I think the division of the Mishnah is um, throughout the Gemara is a printer's thing anyway. Um, to make it easier, they divided the Mishnah. Mm-hmm. Rami Barchama, Rami Barchama says, Rami Barchama is a Talmud of uh, Rav Chizda. And the son-in-law. Maishna, Cheresh V'Chereshes. What's going on? Cheresh V'Chereshes. It's interesting. There's no masculine and uh oh no, there is shaita and shaita, right? Like my and my is that how it works? Yeah. Maishna shaita vishaita, the late kin la rabana nasuin. Um, why is there no rabbinic marriage for an imbecile? We have a brisa. Shaita v'katan shenasa nashim, a shaita and a katan that were married, umesu, and then the husband passed away. And she saying peters menachalitzim ayibam. There is no yibam and chalitza. There's no marriage. It's not a real marriage. Okay. The answer is so. But but by a cherish there is a marriage, and the brother has to do yibam. Right? We, we, we do accept that they may not have such clear thinking process because they're deaf mute. They didn't go to school. But regular normal behaviors they have. And it is possible for them to get along with someone. So um, the rabbis instituted a marriage because there is a possibility that they couldn't, that, that they can stay married. Over there, it's impossible for them to stay married. Why? No one wants to live with a snake in the same room, in the same box. So, and we were talking over here that their, their behavior is... Uh, is uh, erratic, you know, like the, 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 an imbecile. So like the Kina Rabban Nasun, the, the sages didn't institute a marriage that's not a possible marriage. Right. Maishna Katan, like the Kina Rabban Nasun, the Cheresh Kina Rabban Nasun. Why buy a, a young child? The rabbis didn't institute Nasun. They only instituted for the girl, not for the boy. Then say, oh, let's institute that a nine-year-old should be able to marry. They instituted that a girl could could get married when she's young. But by a cheresh, they did institute that he could get married. So it says, A cheresh, a deaf mute, there's nothing to wait for that's going to change. So either the sages institute the marriage or he's never going to get married. So they instituted that a cheresh can get married. With health. Uh, that's the story of the sons. The sons are here. The sons of Ravi Yochanan Ben Adam. Right. The sons got better, right? Right. Yeah. But that's not something that comes with time. You can't, you, have, you can't count on it, right? Right. Where was that Kamara? We have that. Okay. Um, 
But the child, the young boy, why does they institute a marriage for him? We just wait two years and uh, he'll be married. Like the Kinnar Abundasun. Very Katana Dasi Lakal Nasun with Kinnar Abundasun. What about the girl they instituted that a girl can get married? Well, Hassam Shlyinik Baminik Hefke. Over there, they instituted that if she, her father's not alive, you don't want uh, misbehavior with this girl that no one's really protecting her. So they instituted that she's able to get married. By the boy, if his father's not alive, so just wait. Uh, he's going to also misbehave. But, um, but they, they, they didn't institute that. I guess it's different. Uh, it's different for the girl. It's much more detrimental, yeah. right? Why is a child? Why is a, a girl allowed to walk out of a marriage? And a a chereshes, a deaf mute, is not allowed to. She needs a get. So it says no, the reason is uh, 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 annulment. No, but she's a katana. Katana can do can can yes do me in. Yeah. In other words, these are two rabbinic marriages and one of them could be annulled just by her rejecting her husband and one of them requires a get why did the sages institute them in two different ways so the answer is before that uh, only the husband can give the get right and and a, and a child can do me but why can the hereshes not do me no because she doesn't know what's going on well the katana maybe also doesn't know so <laughs> So the answer is the MK Mimni Naspila. There's a problem if the, we would say that the, see by the katana, the husband is gonna want to make her happy so she doesn't do me. Now, how long does he have to do that for? Well, another two, three years. Right. Just keep her happy. Yeah. Um, but by the Hereshes, if he has to keep her happy forever, because she can always walk out for the next 50 years, she can always walk out. You say, I'm not getting into a marriage like that. There's no um, there's no telling what's going to happen tomorrow. She's just going to walk out on it. But by the katana, he can handle it. Yeah, you just keep her happy for a few years, and then, then the marriage is going to be good. She can't walk out. It's up to him if he's going to give a divorce. And, and the whole point over here was that the Hiresha should get married, so they don't want to make it difficult on the husband. Maishna katana dachla b'tshuma, maishna Hiresha slayachla b'tshuma. It's a very interesting question. Katana that marries a Kayan is allowed to eat truma. I think it was only truma der Abana. And a Hereshes cannot. The Tana and Hedra, if you been good guy, the Allah Hereshes, he's a via, she eats a beget, while Katana Bas Joseph's going to say, Hellas Pichuma, Vila Hereshes Layachla. Rabbi Yechon been good guy to testify that a Hereshes that the father. Uh, married her off, that afterwards the husband can divorce her with a get. And that the katana bas Yisrael that marries to a kayan, that's married to a kayan, can eat shuma. In other words, it's a rabbinic marriage and she can eat shuma. I seem to remember it's only shuma to Rabbana. Whatever the case is, we didn't say that the deaf mute is able to eat shuma, that's also a rabbinic marriage. Gemara says, Gezeir Hashem Yachal Cheresh Becharashas. Maybe if the husband is not a pikeach, maybe he's also going to feed to his wife, truma. The Gemara says, what is the problem with that? V'lechel, let them eat truma. Kata noichel It's it's a, a child that's, if a child is eating not kosher, you don't have to stop it. You probably should, but it's not like there's an obligation and anyone to step in, but they, they don't have punishments. So the Cheresh is feeding his wife, the Cheresh is um, He's a Kayan. And so none of them are, are responsible for anything. So we're not gonna, because of that case, we're gonna end up saying that a Cheresh is can every Chuma. The Gemara says, The problem is, let's say the Cheresh is the Kayan. His wife is a Pikachas, it's competent. Now, if he's going to feed her truma, 
she's going to be in trouble because she's responsible to keep the mitzvahs. But that's a good marriage rabbinically. So let her eat Shumadarabanan. Maybe he's going to feed her Shumadaraisa. Why don't we say that Kazera by the Katana? Because the adult is going to know not to feed her. Here, the husband is a cherish. Yeah. It's less of a concern by the katana. Maishna katana dis laksuba, maishna is the less laksuba. Why is there a ksuba to the child's marriage? If he divorces her, he has to give her a ksuba. If she walks out, she doesn't get a ksuba. But if he divorces her, he has to give her a ksuba. And by the Hereshes, they didn't institute a ksuba. The answer is dimkin mimne vle naspila, because we wanted the Hereshes to get married. And if there's a ksuba, it's going to be too much of a hassle. What about the child? Maybe that's also too much of a hassle. The answer is, is that because the child's going to mature, she's going to be a regular wife. He's, he agrees to that, to a ksuba. But to this woman, the Hereshes, not. Ketana minolan des l'ksuba. Who says that a ketana has a ksuba? The tenant, we have a Mishnah. Menes, a girl that walks out, she annuls her marriage. Bashnia, or a girl that was married, um, but she's rabbinically forbidden because she's a close relative, whatever it is, the great-great-grandmother. <laughs> something, Vailanes, or a woman that turns out that she's not really, she doesn't have um, all the, uh, she's not fully mature, um, so that she can't have children, that's considered a mekach tois, right? So, ain't lehen ksuba. They don't get a ksuba, but they get divorced with a get. Uktana, but based on this, we only said that the ma'enes doesn't have a ksuba, because she walked out. But let's say she doesn't walk out, let's say he divorced her, he gave her a get. So, yesh le ksuba. Okay, good. We proved that a ktana has a ksuba. Chereshes menolan bless the ksuba. Where do you see that the chereshes doesn't have a ksuba? The Tanya was taught in a brisa. Cherish v'shaita shenasu pikches afal pishin nispaka. A cherish v'nistat v'shaita ain't lem aleim klum. A cherish in a shaita that got married to regular competent women, even though later on, they became competent as well. They, the original responsibility of a ksuba was not on them because that marriage started as a cherish. Ratzel kaiman, but if they want to keep the wife now after they became competent, they got healed, then yeshlem ksuba, I think the Bach adds in mana. They get a ksuba of a mana. According to that Bach, Aleph goes to the Bach, instead of Masayim, they get a ksuba of a mana. Question is, if, um, if a man marries a woman and she's a basula, the ksuba is supposed to be in Masaya, 200. If she's a baula, she's been married already, the ksuba is a mana. Let's say she's a baula, but it was his, because of him. Now he's marrying her. So does he have to pay a mana or Masaya? It's an interesting question. Um, what I'm seeing from this Gemara is that he only has to pay a mana. He married her when he was a cherish. There was no ksuba. Now he's staying married to her. He has to write a ksuba. How much is that ksuba? A mana. It's only 100. Interesting, no? Uh, uh, according to the Bach's here. Maybe that. Very interesting. <laughs> so, um, but maybe that's the discussion if, the, if, the, if you follow the Bach's here. Let's say it's the other way. He was always um, competent. And he marries a, a, a deaf mute. I feel a of la mea mana, even if the ksuba is a hundred mana. She doesn't really get a ksuba. Right? 
but if he decides to write a ksuba, so ksubasa kayemis, because he's allowed to cause himself damage. This two gersaisa, maybe lozun bin He wants her to be supported by him, or maybe lozuk bin Maybe he wants himself to lose, to damage. That's his own choice. Time of the ratsa. The reason is because that's what he wanted. But if he doesn't want, then she doesn't have a ksuba. You see, there's no ksuba for chereshes. The Gemara says dim kain mim naspila, and the difference is. Because he won't marry her if she has a ksuba. Yachi, pikachas the chereshes, liskin la ksuba. Why don't we institute a ksuba the other way? If she's a pikachas, she's competent to the chereshes. He says, dimkin mimne vlein minsibi, because then he's not going to want to get married if he realizes there's a ksuba here. Because she's the one that wants to get married more than he wants to get married. And so they didn't institute for him a ksuba. She didn't institute for her the ksuba when he's a cheresh. So both ways they didn't institute a ksuba. For a cheresh and for a cheresh. There was this deaf mute that lived in the neighborhood of Rav Malkiai. In Sibitzish, he married a woman. Because of Arba Meazuz Minachse, and he wrote her a ksuba for four hundred zuz. Amarava Man Chakim Kerav Malchi the Gavur Rabu. Who's this? Who's so smart like Rav Malchi? It's a great person. Kasavar he thought Ilu Ratz Shivcha L'Sham Chemila Zavnina Zavnina La. If he wanted to hire a maid for four hundred zuz, he wanted to sold it, sold the maid to him. He bought a maid for four hundred zuz. Koskin Hacha the Katarti over here. He has a maid and a wife. Yeah, I don't think people like this comment. <laughs> okay. Amar Abchia Barashi, Amar Shmuel. Abchia Barashi says, name of Shmuel. In other words, what's the... Yeah. Eishes <laughs> Cheresh. When I started to teach um, uh, earth science, earth science, so some, some guy comes up to me and says, take a black marker. And every time it says fossil in the... Uh, Oh, yeah. And this, this cross it out. <laughs> it's like the whole book. But anyway, over here, it's to cross out everything that's not uh, politically correct. I cross out the whole, uh, uh, take a black marker and cross out everything. Okay. So, Eishas Cheresh, in Chayovan Aleashem Tali. Someone lives with the wife of a Cheresh. What are we discussing now? The Cheresh is a deaf, is a deaf mute. We're assuming that he's also not competent. So our assumption is, is that the marriage isn't a real biblical marriage. And the rabbis instituted a marriage there. Let's say someone comes along and lives adultery with, with this wife. It's rabbinic law of marriage. He doesn't have to bring an Ashim Tali. We don't say that there's a doubt there if the marriage is a real marriage. We don't say that. Lema Messiah. I have a support for the statement of Rav Chia Barashi in the name of Shmuel. Rav Chia Barashi is usually a Talmud of Rav. Here he's quoting Shmuel. Chamisha la Yitshmu. Five people should not take Shuma vim tarmu and Shumas and Shuma. And if they do take Shuma, you don't have to suspect that it's Shuma at all. Ve'eluhein. And they are. Cheir Shait Vakatan. That's three of them. Cheir Shait Vakatan can't take Shuma. Batarim Ashain Shalai. If someone takes Shuma from property, from uh, produce that's not his. Um, or if a non-Jew takes Chuma, even if he has permission to take Chuma, but Chuma requires shlichus. You have to, you have to um, oh, tell the person. Can you say that a Goyish slave can have Chuma from his master who's a Kohen? Can eat it. Eat it. Oh, but uh, the slave may be different. Here we're talking about it's not, it's not a slave. I don't know if the slave is going to be the same role. But ain't Chuma si Chuma. It's not considered truma for all of these. You see, if it's ain't shumasi truma, that's a proof that the cheresh is a hundred percent not competent. There's no doubt because we don't even say that oh you have to take truma again or something, but you have to consider this truma. It's clearly that it's a hundred percent nothing. 
Okay, that's a proof. The Gemara says, not necessarily. Maybe Shmuel really holds like Rabbi Lazar, that there really is a question about the Truma. The Tanya Rabbitzchem Shum Rabbi Lazar, Truma Scher Shlai Tetz Lechol Neshu Safik. Maybe he really holds that there's a doubt. The Gemara says, well, if he holds it's a doubt, he's really like Rabbi Lazar, Shem Tali Nami Lechayev. Then if someone lives with this woman, then there's a doubt if how competent he is. He should have to bring an Ashram Tali. You say, no, Ashram Tali is a different rule. Bin Chaticha Mishtei Chatichas. By Ashram Tali, how does Ashram Tali work? Ashram Tali is a type of chatas when the person doesn't know if he did the sin. It's not a chatas. It's like in place of that. What happens is you have a piece of meat that's shuman, kosher fat. You have a piece of meat that's chelev. And he ate, which is forbidden fat, he ate one of them. He doesn't remember which one he ate. That's just an example. So, chaticha, right. Chatichas and mishtei chatichas. I definitely had a prohib- prohibition here. I definitely had a pre- permitted food here, and I don't know which one. Over here, it's only one chaticha. He's calling his wife a chaticha. I only had one piece. It wasn't, I had two women here, and one of them was permitted, and one of them wasn't, and I don't know which one I, I lived with. That's not uh, what's happening. There was a one woman here, and there's a doubt. Is she married or not? It's not two women, one was yes and one was not. Wow. But does Rabbi hold that you need um, uh, to Rabbi Lazar hold that, that, that the Asham Tali is only in such a case? But Tanya, but we have a Bryce, Rabbi Lazar, or Kvi, I don't know how to pronounce it. This uh, buffalo that we don't know if it's a, a domesticated animal that you have to remove the Chalev or if it's a wild animal that you don't have to remove the Chalev. Chayav and al chelba yashem tali. You are chayav, yashem tali. Even though that's chaticha mishtei chaticha, that's not chaticha mishtei chaticha. That's just one thing, which is a doubt. So if there's a suffix. There's a suffix. There's two types of sfekas. Right. One is one is kosher and one isn't. Mm-hmm. Another type of suffix is I don't know what the status is just of this one. Right. Yeah, we spoke like before that there could be some circumstances where you just. So what we're saying now is that Shmuel says that you're not chayav and Hashem Tali. We want to know, does that mean that there's no doubt in his de- the, 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 this wife, the Aisha Scherish, is definitely not considered a marriage? Or do we say that the reason why there's no Hashem Tali is because you need two women here to have a Hashem Tali. Not just one woman down. So the Gemara says, Shmuel Savakar Rabbi Lazar Bechada, Palak Bechada. He holds like Rabbi Lazar in one aspect, where Rabbi Lazar holds that there is a doubt about a Cheresh, but he doesn't hold like Rabbi Lazar about how Asham Tali works, because according to Rabbi Lazar, Asham Tali would work even if it's, khati, even if it's one Chaticha, not Chaticha, Achas Mustay Chaticha. Some say this the other way. Exactly the opposite. Someone lives with this married woman, married to the Cheresh, has to bring an Ashim Tali. Maybe there's a real marriage there. Maysve, the Gemara has a question. Five people, don't, their Chum is nothing. How could Chumal say that there's a doubt? The Gemara answers. He'll take Rebbe Lazar. That Rebbe Lazar argues on that and says that the Chuma is a doubt. Okay. Boy, Ravashi, Ravashi has a question. My time with Rabbi Lazar, what's the reason for Rabbi Lazar that says there's a doubt by a cheresh? Do we say like this? I'm taking off. I'll see you later. Okay, we'll get, I'll try to get to the two dots on the next page on the top. Okay, it's good. Okay, it's the cheresh died to klish. There's one thing's clear, that the cheresh has a weak, has a dull um, understanding. He's a deaf mute. He never went to school. He wasn't able to learn. He can't hear and he can't speak. So we know that it's weak. However, but is his understanding clear? I love that. Maybe it's not clear. We know he's not the, the highest uh, IQ because he wasn't able to learn, at least through hearing and speaking. But does he have clarity? And that's a does question. that mean he clearly doesn't understand? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he always has one intention. In other words, it's not that he fluctuates. It's not that 
Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Oidelma, or maybe the doubt that Rebbe Lazar was talking about is pshitle the daita klisu. We know that his mind is is dull. Balav daita tzilusu, and his mind is not clear as well. But the problem is, he goes through periods where it's like a teenager. Sometimes he's mature, sometimes he's not. So um, depends on the day, the hour. <laughs> so uh, that's the question over here by the by the cherish. Sometimes he's clear, sometimes he's not. The Gemara says, Why are you getting into a question like this? The Gemara says, Well, you know why? Because can he divorce his wife? If we say that, look, this is what he is. He's always like this. So then, well, the same we got divorced. If the same we got married, he can get the divorce because he didn't change anything. This is how he is. But if we say that his mind fluctuates, sometimes he's competent, sometimes not, and that's why we say there's a doubt, then Kedushi Matsim Makadish, he can get married because maybe that was the good time, but maybe now it's the bad time. He can't give a divorce. So take it. There's a question about that. I think today's Kufkes Zion. Two uh, behind, and then I'm going to be three behind, four behind on Sunday. So wow. Sunday we'll have a longer share. That's just a shame. Oh, there's also Yeshiva Day on Monday.